Brought to you by New Denture Cream, the special denture toothpaste made with the cleaning power dental plates need. Denture Cream. And now, let's all play What's My Line? <laughs> and now, live from New York, let's meet our What's My Line panel. First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in papers coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. On my left, a very funny fellow who will open on May 14th at the Latin Casino in Merchantville, New Jersey, and is also star of his own television show, Joey Bishop. Thank you, Dorothy. And uh, to my left, a young lady that uh, I have seen for the third time without her husband's knowledge, but it was in a picture called One, Two, Three, Miss Arlene Francis. And now, the head of one of the greatest publishing houses in America, Mr. Bennett Cerf. I want you to know the hazards that you're exposed to when you're on a show like this. Just before I came in, our panel moderator told me a story about a nearsighted whale who fell in love with the United States submarine and followed it all around the world. And every time the submarine shot off a couple of torpedoes, the whale passed out cigars. <laughs> and the man who told me that awful story is John Charles Davis. I might really be concerned tonight, except that I know one of Bennett's own can always be identified. <laughs> That's a cute story, Bennett. Joey Bishop, nice to have you with us on the panel. Well, thank you, John. It's been some hour. time, but it's nice being back. <laughs> <laughs> nice to have you here and some interesting occupations with which we trust you have some fun in the next half hour. We'll also have a famous mystery guest before my friends on the panel a little bit later in the program, and we'll meet our first... Oh. And now to meet our first contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? And Shuley, right? <laughs> Is it Miss or Mrs.? Mrs. 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 And where are you from, Mrs. Shuley? West Hollywood, Florida. West Hollywood, Florida. Nice mm -hmm. to have you with us. May I present our panel? Mrs. Shuling, and now will you join me over here, please? You know how we keep score? Yes. Fine, then we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. Panel, Mrs. Schulling is self-employed and deals in a product. And we'll begin the general questioning with uh, Dorothy Kilgallen. Is this a product that would be found in the home, Mrs. Schulling? No. No, I would say this. This does not rule out the possibility that it might be in a home, but it is not something that you would normally expect to find in the average home. One down to nine to go, Mr. Bishop. Um, is the part of the country, this beautiful part of the country you're living in, have anything at all to do with the product that you deal in? Um, Not no. specifically, no, Joy. That's two down and eight to go, Miss Francis. Is it a product that can be enjoyed by both sexes? Yes. Uh, is it uh, uh, a large product? Is it uh, larger than... Um, uh, I hate to mention that bread box. Is it as large as Joey Bishop? No. No, it's not. As, that's three down and seven to go, Mr. Sir. Can I at least thank her, John? <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Schilling, has the product with which you're concerned ever been or is it alive? No. Four down and six to go, Miss Kilgallen. Is this solid rather than liquid? Uh, is it unfoldable? It's ri something rigid. Would I recognize it if I saw it? No, you asked if it was unfoldable, and we said yes. Oh, that doesn't make it... All right, okay. 
pretend I didn't say that. Um, if I saw it, would I know what it was? Yes. Uh, does it come in various colors? Yes. Is anything amusing attached to it? Are you having fun when you use this product? Well, that would not be the intent, no, not basically to have fun with it. That's five dollars five to go, Mr. Bishop. If it's unfoldable, it would almost have to be an army cut. <laughs> <laughs> um, is it a, uh, is it in any way educational? No. no. Six dollars four to go, Miss Francis. Is it pliable even though unfoldable? Well, now, when you say unfoldable, I'm... I, you said it was unfoldable. Yeah, well, now, I just want to explain the context. This means that it can be unfolded. <laughs> if it's unfoldable, it can be unfolded. <laughs> I don't think I went to the right school. Uh, it can be, is it made, is it a material? Yes. Is it, um, uh, is it anything like awning material? No. Seven down and three to go, Mrs. Sir. Mrs. Schuling, is this product uh, that you are concerned with used in either construction or transportation in any way? No. <laughs> Well, it has a sort of errant association with transportation of a kind, doesn't it? Yes, yes, sir. Well, does that mean that it might be used in, in uh, above-the-ground transportation, something to do with flying in the air or getting out of an airplane? Hmm. No. That's it. Down and two to go, Miss Kilgallen. Well, now I really don't know whether it's foldable or not. Don't ask. <laughs> uh, so it I guess... foldable and unfoldable. I see. It's material. Do you ever hook it up to anything? Do you ever what? <laughs> Do you ever hook it up to anything or hang it on anything? Hang it on? Well, we'd hang it on something once in a while, yes. Oh, you would? Would you ever hang it on a wall? If there's a wall around that's got something to hang it on, you know. We'd hang it on a wall, wouldn't we? Yeah. Uh, does this have any words or any insignia? Uh, embellishing it, which makes it different from other pieces of material? Yes, sometimes. Yes. Well, if it's hanging out of doors, presumably, well, you said it wouldn't be found in the home. Would it be found in an office building? No. That makes it nine down and one to go, Mr. Bishop. Today's in the morning. Oh. I almost had... I know this is not a question, mind you, John. But so far, I have her dealing in second-handed bridal gowns. So far. <laughs> well, I might say you're closer than anybody else has been tonight. Does your product make a particular member of a particular sex happier than it makes another member of the sex? See, I... Really, what I'm trying to do, John, is mix her up like she has us mixed up. <laughs> now, did you understand my question? No. 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 Hey, Bennett's not supposed to answer me, John. <laughs> That's right, Bennett. There's been no call for a concert. Then he'll no, want to I, I think we'd have to give you a no on that. You just didn't get into the apparel area except with your last question. And uh, we thought perhaps, but I'm glad that you didn't, that you'd have the derby fresh in your mind. Oh. Because, you see, what Mrs. Schulling does is to make... Uh, like. racing colors for jockeys. Oh. And seven of the jockeys in the Kentucky Derby on Saturday uh, have had colors made for them by uh, Mrs. Schulling. She's not sure, for instance, that Mr. Hartack was wearing her colors, but it's likely that he was. Uh-huh. And this... What do you mean by the colors? You mean the, the costume? The, the costume. Suits? The yes. actual suits? The jacket and the cap. And the cap? Mm -hmm. Yes, I think it was the fact that it was to be seen mostly outdoors that really threw us, because yeah. we think of apparel as something you can wear in or out. In or out, that's yeah. right. But you, don't you think the jockey wears this before he comes out of doors? 
He slips into it before he slips on the horse. Well, I've never heard of one showing up for dinner, you know, in, in uh, one of these sets. But you've been doing it for 27 years? 27 years. It's a wonderful life, Mr. Schilling. Is it Gulfstream in the, in the wintertime, and then you come to Monmouth Park Monmouth in the summertime and works right at the racetrack, so she knows all the people and have anything to do with racing. Must be a very interesting way to spend your life. Nice to have you with us. <laughs> All right, now to meet our second contestant, will you enter and sign in, please? June Poplar. Right? Is it Miss or Mrs. Poplar? Mrs. And Mrs. Poplar, where are you from? Kansas City, Missouri. Kansas City, Missouri. Nice to have somebody from Missouri with us. May I present the panel? And now, would you join me over here, please? You know how we keep score, Mrs. Poplar? Yes. Fine, we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your life. <laughs> All right, panel, we can tell you that uh, Mrs. Poplar is salaried and deals in a service, and we'll begin the general questioning with um, Bennett Sir. Mrs. Poplar, if those people in Kansas City have any sense, you're a popular girl out there. Uh, does, it, uh, does, the, um, does the service that you perform, is that done in or about Kansas City? Yes. Uh, might it be done with equal facility any other place? Yes. Is the service performed for people? Yes. Well, it's ultimate. There are people associated with the contracting of it, with your permission, but it could be associated fundamentally with other than people. We mean, you, you don't mean animals when you say other than people, you mean is companies. That your, is that your question? No, well, you say other than people. Uh, people make corporations and companies, John. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you mean that this service could, I will ask, can this service also be performed for animals? It has a relationship to animals. We'll give you a qualified yes. Has it really? Does this service consist of any kind of paperwork? Would it involve, in any way, insurance? Yes. Well, are you in something, have you something to do with one of the big insurance companies? Yes. Do you, uh, are you a person who sells insurance? Yes, we, in, a, in a way, yeah. But you're not an agent who goes around from house to house trying to sell people policies, no. are you? Do you? Are you an actuary? Who? No. Not an actuary. That's one down a nine to go, Miss Kilgallen. Now, actually, what Bennett has done is to identify the general occupation. We are particularly interested in the kind of activity in the insurance field with which Mrs. Poplar is so associated. Uh, do you insure racehorses? No. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Bishop. Uh, are we assuming that you do insure animals? Yes. And only animals? No. Yes. Yeah. Uh, are we now to, just, to find out what animals? Yes. Oh. Uh, dogs? No. <laughs> no, three down to seven to go. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Kathy said I'm dogs. Sorry, Joey. I'm sorry. Do, hmm. you, do you insure more than one kind of animal? Yes. Would you insure animals either in a zoo or a circus? No. Four down and six to go, Mr. Sir. Would you insure animals in herds like cattle? No. Five down and five to go, Miss Kilgallen. Would you insure wild animals? No. Six down and four to go, Mr. Bishop. Do you insure animals that are used for professional purposes? No. Seven down and three to go, Miss Francis. What do you mean? We, well, for example, there, well, no, like Lassie, uh, for example, uh, I imagine no. has to be insured. No, but that's well, right. You, you have a note. Can we have a brief show, conference, or don't you need it all? You can have 30 seconds for a conference. Could, we've, we've left out furs, like minks and things like that. Oh, just, just, you mean dead furs? Dead furs. <laughs> dead animals, I don't know. Maybe I don't not, know, I hate forget to it. it. Do, do you have anything to do with insuring dead animals? It seems like an awful profession. <laughs> no. Hate that, it's due to go, Mr. Sir. Do you have anything to do yeah. with insuring animals that are used in either experiments and laboratories or in U.S. government projects, including no. fish? <laughs> One to go, Miss Kilgallen. Well, it must fly then, this animal. Uh, would I recognize these animals if I saw them? Yes. 
Do you think that I personally have ever had anything to do with any of them? Yes. <laughs> well, can any of them been war be worn? Can any of them be worn? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't think so. I think it would be a little bit... Uh, you could do it, but I don't think you'd be very comfortable because Bird you see... Mrs. Spotler writes insurance for chickens and turkeys. <laughs> Singleton Company in Kansas City. And the thing that interests you, Bennett, I asked Mrs. Popper some specific questions. She writes insurance on a flock of chickens. They call flocks, are they not? Yes. And it will have no relationship to the building they're housed in. It's just for the chickens against wind, storm, damage, you know, wind damage, hail, Chicken rain. Pox. No, no, no disease. No disease. <laughs> And the pox, pox, on, on, your your chickens, <laughs> pox yeah. on your chickens. Pox on your chickens. Well, that was fun. We stumped the panel anyway with the specifics. And I must say, Miss Popper has another uh, reason to be very, very uh, happy. She is the champion scu scuba? Scuba. 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 Oh, underwater. Uh, what do they do? The underwater yeah. thing. And she, she competes. And you compete at New Orleans. And they have these difficult things of you have to spearfish and yeah. build things underwater and well, find she's markets. just insuring things down there, John. <laughs> just insuring them. Woman's, well, you're the woman's national scuba champion. Is yeah. that right? Well, there you are. Underwater Woman? scuba. Woman's yeah. national scuba champion. Yeah. Thank you very much, Mr. Popper. Nice to have you with us tonight. We'll meet tonight's mystery guest in just a moment, but first, here is a word from our sponsor. And now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery challenger, for which the panel is always blindfolded. Blindfolds in place, panel? Yes, yes John. John. Good. Will you enter mystery challenger and sign in, please? <coughs> panel, as you know, in the case of the Mystery Challenger, a different form of questioning. You go to one question at a time, in turn, moving clockwise, and we'll begin with uh, Arlene Francis. Are you a performer in the performing arts? Yes. Now, I'm going to be very fair with you and tell you, at least for a while, I shall be the voice answering the questions. Our guest holds up signs uh, for reasons which will be obvious subsequently. Mr. Sir? Did you have... Anything to do with the Tony Awards last year, last week for theatrical excellence? Yes. Miss Kilgallen? Are you a man? <laughs> yes. Mr. Bishop? <clears throat> Are you a, uh, considered a great dancer? <laughs> no. What the hell and to go, Miss Francis? Did you yourself win an award? Yes. Mr. Sir? Are you one of the greatest composers of music in America today? <laughs> I think I'll say yes. I think it might be Dick Rogers. Well, that's good. That's two down and eight to go, Miss Kilgallen. Oh, that's, that's what I was going to say. Uh, what, what kind of an answer did Bennett get? Well, well actually, Bennett got a, a yes, no. What do you mean? Well, did I he get a yes as being one of the great? Well, he asked a great composer. I it... asked it was Dick Rogers. Yeah, well, what then we... I got a no, didn't I? You got a no on Dick Rogers. That's but, right. But am I straight, John, that our, our guest is a composer? Yes, no. Now, that's what we gave you in the first place. No. Our guest is being modest here and trying to equate properly his many, several, and splendid talents. I pass. Mr. Bishop. Mr. Who? Bishop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that well known, John, if you can mispronounce my name. <laughs> um, just taking a wild guess, are you eight burrows? Yes! That's <laughs> 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 a funny voice. Did you see Dorothy? Yeah. Why I have to say yes, no, Abe does compose. He has written songs, yes. And I'll argue with you about that greatest composer bit, but you know, I didn't, it didn't seem right on the air. <laughs> Well, I'll and argue he, with you, Abe. And he won his Tony last Sunday, as we all know, for... They won about... How, to how many Tonys did uh, How to Succeed w win? About we got seven. Seven. And how many did Man for All Seasons win? 
I didn't count them. <laughs> it's easy to see which man has the Tony. <laughs> but now you also understand what Abe was doing was holding these up. Because yeah. we, we knew very well that if he started right off using his own voice, he's got every ability... Yeah, I didn't know what to do. I said, to try to try high voices. Uh, nothing would nothing pull it. It's that awful sound, you know? <laughs> uh, well, not, not awful sound. Just easily identifiable sound, Mr. Yeah. Burroughs. Yes, Mr. Burroughs. Yeah. <laughs> Good to be here, John. It's good to have you with us. I'm working on a new picture. You know, you're always supposed to say what you're doing, aren't you? Like, yes. What, say, what? You know, I'm like, I'm, uh, I opened a new Chinese restaurant or something. You're supposed to say that. What new but picture I'm doing, you I'm excited. I'm writing a picture which I'm going to direct in the South of France next year for United Artists and with Martin Paul producing. It's an exciting thing. What's the name? It's based on the, on a play called Janus. Uh-huh. That was a big hit. Yeah. yeah. Are you, what are you going to call With it? Margaret Sullivan and yeah. Yeah. What are you going to call it? I don't know. I don't, so far, I call it Janus. It says Janus on the thing. We'll think of something. Maybe we'll call it Watch My Line. Well, that would be a great <laughs> idea. It would do us much pleasure if you would do it. Thank you very much, Abe, for coming to see us for being our guest. Lovely to have you with us. Anybody else who's sitting here? I must say, panel, you've done rather well tonight, and we'll have another contestant after this word from our alternate sponsor. And now to meet another contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? Franz? Fertner, right, sir? <laughs> now, we're very short of time. I'm from Austria, Vienna. Born in Austria. Well, fine. May I present you to the panel very quickly because we're short of time. Will you join me over here? Do you know how we keep score, Mr. Perkins? Yes. Fine. Then let's let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. Deals in a service, and let's begin. Is salary deals in a service, and let's begin the general questioning with uh, Arlene Prentz. Mr. Fertner, does your business have anything to do in any way with the entertainment business? <coughs> or the sporting, you know, the sports world? Entertainment or sports? Yes. 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 It does. Uh, uh, shall I choose sports? Do you have anything to do with sports? No. I one chose down the wrong one. Thank you very much. <laughs> Mr. Sir. With the entertainment angle, Mr. Quartner, have anything to do with either something to eat or drink? No. Uh, two down and eight to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, would you be a performer yourself? Yes. Uh, could you perform at either circuses or amusement parks? I don't know. Would you perform at either circuses or amusement parks? Yes. Is there anything about your work that requires special skills? Yes. Uh, does it involve anything dangerous? Not particular. No, I don't think not necessarily dangerous. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Bishop. Not dangerous. With all wow, those kids I, had around? Him, I had him killing lions and all that. I, have you anything to do at all to do with the circus? Yes. Um, this would be wild if it's not dangerous circus. Do you uh, do anything in the way of comedy? No. No. Actually, I'm going to throw the cards over because we're running out of time, and I want an opportunity to really identify our guest, who is known worldwide as Eunice. Who is with the regular? That's one that's finger. right. With on one finger, brothers Barnum and Bailey Circus, who balances yeah. on that one finger. It's the most fantastic oh, I wish performance. You really <laughs> Mr. Bishop, Bishop, yes. uh, Bishop, it's very nice to have you with us. Right. Thank you, John. It's been real I nice mean, being Joey. Hope Thank you'll you. get back real soon, and good night, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. Good night, John. Good night, Joey. Come good again night, soon. Arlene. Thank you. Good night, Arlene. Please do. Good night, Joey. Good night, Bennett. Mr. Yuna should have put the finger on you, John. Oh! Good night. As you probably already learned, it's <laughs> very hot in New York tonight. Thank you, Bennett. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being with us on What's My Life.
What's My Line is a CBS Television Network production in association with Mark Goodson and Bill Codman. This is Johnny Olson speaking. The only way to keep good college teachers on the job is to pay them the salaries they deserve. Support the college of your choice today.